Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. The small sample in college football is coming to an end. We've reached the month of October, which generally can make or break a lot of college football teams. We'll break down some of the matchups and how it pertains to this new playoff coming up. Bill Bender is with us from Sporting News. Hey, Bill, great to have you back here on the show. And, and really, uh, you know, there's no winning the championship in October, but you can lose it pretty quickly. Yeah, and you're starting to see the one-loss teams pile up. So on a weekend like this one, where there's only one ranked game, you just can't lose. And, and we got a couple top 10 underdogs on the road this weekend I know we're going to talk about. But as we get into these next two weeks following, October 12th, October 19th, mega Saturdays, you're really going to start to see the playoff picture and the bubble come into focus. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no doubt next week's schedule looks insane. So, uh, you know, lighter schedule this week, but we still treat it the same. Uh, all right, so uh, A&M Missouri in this great SEC matchup, and this is, boy, a contrast in teams for sure. Missouri's been fantastic on offense all season long. They're two-and-a-half-point dogs to Texas A&M, which has just been, uh, you know, uh, you know, they've been, I, I would say, playing well enough to put themselves in position. Uh, this top 25 this year, Bill, more than ever, has just been shuttling this back end, 23, 24, and 25. It's like you're in one week, you're out the next week. And, uh, you know, Missouri is a dog on the road this week. They've been the better team, but are they a contender or a pretender? I guess we're going to find out coming up this week. Right. Popular upset pick. Nate Knoll has averaged, is part of this Missouri offense that averages over 200 yards rushing per game. Whenever I see a team that can get over 200 yards rushing, I know it can travel a little bit. So if they have some success on the ground early, it will open things up for Brady Cook. It's a noon game, not a primetime game. So that takes some of the shine off of being at Kyle Field, even though it is a tough road environment. And Texas A&M, whichever quarterback they have, whether it's Reed or Wigman, uh, Missouri's defense is limiting opposer, opposing offenses to 50% completion percentage. So all of that is my way to say, if you're a top 10 team, go out and prove it. I'm going to take the Tigers here coming off a of bye week. I think betters are punishing them a little bit for how bad they looked against Vanderbilt. I don't know if that's fair or not, but I like Missouri to get through the trend. Okay, two and a half points here. And, uh, you know, question, a lot of people questioning also A&M's win against the Gators, which I think is fair to say at this point, too. Let's take a look at some of the odds to get to the college football playoff. And Missouri is right there. They're plus 125 right now to get in. I find it interesting here because, you know, I, I see a lot of, like, light plus here that I don't even like. Like, I don't like Clemson. You know I don't like Notre Dame. Uh, we're going to find out a lot more about Miami this week after that shocker last week. My gosh, I mean, they you know, could have easily lost that one. They're at Cal this week, too. That Miami game is why I like Clemson right now. I think they've found their footing since the blowout against Georgia. The offense looks really good. Cade Klubnick, 12 touchdown passes since the Georgia game. And they found some help at receiver. And Dabo's clearly got it going on in that locker room. There's a belief system. Their schedule and Miami's schedule is set up that both may meet in the ACC championship game with one loss or less. Best possible scenario for the conference, because I think at that point, Craig, they probably get two playoff teams. So of those plus teams on that list you just showed, buy in on Clemson. They made the 14 playoff a couple times. I, I think they can make the 12-team playoff. So uh, the, the next game we're going to look at here is the one where odds makers you know, set a line and fans jump on one team in particular here. And they're all jumping on Michigan this week, plus two and a half at Washington. But, you know, I got to tell you, Bill, this is just not understanding the dynamic of what the Wolverines are this season. I mean, this is a, a team that's going to the game is going to come down in every game that they play right down to the end. And that's very dangerous. And for me. That's why I don't think Michigan is going to be in the mix for the championship at the end of the season, but their defense is undeniable. They're going to have to completely stop Washington on the road to win. I don't see any other way that they get it done. Yeah, the, the bubble could burst this week. If you took one of those old projectors and overlaid the depth chart on these two teams from last year's title game to this year's game, you would scratch your head and be like, where are all these guys at? That's what makes it a coin flip to me in some ways. Washington hasn't been able to put it together. You look at their total stats, you're like, man, they have a ton of yards. They're good defense. Why are they not winning games? Penalties have crushed them. Terrible red zone offense has crushed them. They've had to settle for field goals. Michigan, is, we know what they're going to try to do here. They're going to try mm -hmm. to run the football, build an early lead, rest on the defense. Looks like Will Johnson will be back. But that second half of that Minnesota game concerns me. Washington's going to go tempo here. It's a true coin flip. I don't blame betters for going with Washington in this spot at all. 
I'm still going to take Michigan. I think the running game controls the game. But like you said, this will come down possibly to a late field goal. Michigan's kicker, Veda, four field goals of 50 yards or more. Can he make it in the clutch? Yeah, we'll find out because Alex Orgy is, uh, you know, just simply holding down the fort. If he puts up these numbers this week at Washington, they're going to lose. That would be my prediction this week. All right, now let's get to Rutgers and Nebraska. Not a lot of odds maker backing for the Scarlet Knights, despite their undefeated record. Nebraska's had one blip on their radar this season. Otherwise, they have looked the part of a potential playoff team. They're seven and a half point favorites this week. Again, another low total of 41 and a half. We know what Greg Schiano wants to do. Same thing that Michigan wants to do. Run the ball, keep it close to the end, kick a field goal and win. Can they keep this game close enough in Lincoln to do that? Who do you believe can win a one-score game here? You know, that's my question. Nebraska, 2-18 and 18 in one-score games since 2021. It's one of the most remarkable stats in all of college football that they have this curse in these close games. And here comes Rutgers, a team with a shaky run defense, but also, like we said about Missouri, averages over 200 yards per game on the ground. I do think it's going to be a one-score game. I think Rutgers is going to hang around and cover. Craig, made to be foolish on a Thursday afternoon, but – I like Nebraska to win the game straight up, though. I think they finally win a one-score game. It's tight. It come through. Fun game. Rutgers competes, but the Huskers finally win one. All right. Fair enough, Bill. I know we're going to have a lot more exciting games next week. We keep it real here on Newswire. We're not going to try and sell you <laughs> on this week. of Listen, every week is fun in college football. I'm not going to try and sit, sit here and sell you on this uh, being the best week of the season. Next week, it gets serious. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you.